All right. So, heavy, heavy hammer bushcraft again. Talked about when I was doing Nesmuk's Diddy Bag that I had to create a couple of these things for it completely from scratch. One of those I'm kind of, I'm not recreating, I'm reworking a bad batch that I made. Um, I'm reworking the sticking sap that I made. And I kind of wanted to get some of this on video for you guys so you could see what was going on with it. Um, as you can see, I got a little double boiler set up here, just amazing jar in a pot, double boiler, it works. Um, this batch was, this batch came out fairly well, I think, except for the fact that I did not mix it correctly. I didn't mix it to get the right consistency that I wanted, which I learned on the batch that I made after this it came out really well. So what I'm doing is I'm really, I'm re reworking this batch, I'm just melting it back down, and I'm going to um, work it in the way that I found worked best on the last one that I made, which was basically you dump the pour, thing, pour the whole thing into warm water and you work it like taffy. You can get any of the chunks and funky stuff out, mix it all up really good by hand, and you end up with a much more salve-like consistency rather than this, which turned out to be very salve-like on the bottom with a coating of hard beeswax on the top. So don't mind the mess in my kitchen either, by the way. I, I'm, I'm in the middle of cleaning and rearranging and remodeling all at one time, so... It's kind of a wreck right now, but uh, I wanted to I wanted to kind of get this on video so you guys could see what I was talking about, and uh, yeah, I mean, I'm gonna be cutting in and out quite a bit because there's no point in making you sit here and watch this boil. It's just hell. I don't want to sit here and watch this boil. But anyways, I just posted a blog post over on uh, what is it, uh, Heavy Hammer Bushcraft at Blogspot or hhbushcraft.blogspot.com. Um, the link's down in the description, um, detailing how I did this. But like I said, I wanted to get it on video for posterity too. Uh, recipe and everything is over on the blog. Hopefully this doesn't take too long to boil down and hopefully I can get most of the process actually on video, which would be really, really nice. Um, provided I remember to actually start the camera, which I've forgotten to do a couple times already. <laughs> so, being what it is, for right now, I'm gonna kill the video um, and I'll start it back up at the next phase. All right, so what I got here is a basically a mixing bowl full of warm water. Not hot, warm. Um, <clears throat> the plan is, when this is done over here, uh, melting down and everything else, I'm gonna pour that into here, and if everything works well, like it did with the last batch, I'll be able to mix it, kind of pull it like taffy a little bit, and that'll let me mix all the chunks out and get a really good consistency out of it, hopefully. seems to be working reasonably well. However, I did, I can already tell, screw up one small part of this. I really probably should have put a whole lot less water in here or used cheesecloth to pull all this together so that I could work it. However, well, I did not do that. So, I gotta deal with what I got. Luckily, it's not too bad. It's just a matter, it's gonna be a little bit more, a little bit more work to do this and probably going to take me a little longer. The consistency already feels pretty damn good though, like right about whoa, where it needs to be. So hopefully I've done my mixture right because I don't remember if this batch was the one that was mixed exactly right or not. I did about four of these, believe it or not. Um, this is kind of a messy process. There's not really any way around it. You're gonna make a mess. You're gonna get sticky. You know, it's just, it is what it is. I'm kind of used to this. I used to make, my grandfather used to make uh, what he called a grafting wax, um, which is really a drawing salve um, when I was a kid for 
Uh, they use it for grafting apple trees. If you don't know anything about that, I'm, this is not the place to learn. Um, I was not actively involved in that part of it so much. Um, now obviously, because of the way I did this and the amount of water, I can't pull this quite like taffy. So really what I'm doing is just kind of squeezing it through my fingers and trying to work most of the chunks out. Now there are a lot of chunks just because of the way I did this. But this is all a learning curve. I've never, I've only done this before once successfully. And uh, well, it's been a long time since I did it with the drawing tab too. So learning curves and whatnot, they're fun. So, this is really good stuff, though. I've tried this stuff out. I had, well, you can't see them right now. They're covered with it. <laughs> I had a pair of matching cuts, almost matching cuts, on my right hand. And uh, I tried, because, you know, if I'm going to use this stuff, I want to know that it works, how it works, and all that. And I tried it out by treating one of the cuts with it and not treating the other one. Um, it actually seems to have worked remarkably well. Um, the cut that I treated with it, well, healed quickly. The cut that I did not treat with it is still healing. Um, I'm, normally I'm a pretty fast healer anyway, so that kind of helps. But in this case, the one untreated would be my normal healing rate. And it's not healed yet. So... There is something to be said for this, um, as there is, I believe, for most of the old remedies and such that we've kind of stopped using in favor of, you know, modern stuff like Neosporin and triple antibiotic and all that stuff. Um, so there is something to be said for it, of course. However, well, that's got a really good consistency to it, though. It still has a few chunks in it, and, you know, you're not going to get them all out. You're just not. Um... I mean, I, I imagine if you had all the patience in the world and all the time in the world to do this, you probably could get all the chunks out. I have neither of those things. <laughs> I tend to be a little more impatient. Um, as you can see, this is really good consistency, though. Uh, so, I was hoping I could wipe those two cuts off so you could see them. Yeah, sort of. I don't know if you can see that. The upper cut here is the one that I treated. The lower one here I did not. You see that one's still scabbed. This one is not even really scabbed anymore. So I do have pretty good faith in this stuff. Um, I believe it will probably work remarkably well, really, um, once I get it all off my hands. So I'm going to end the video there while I clean up because ooh, this stuff is a sticky mess. And yes, this is with olive oil on my hands. It's just, it's that, it's called sticking salve for a reason, you know? So, yeah. How well does it stick to paper towels, I wonder? Hmm. Good enough for government work. All right. Oh, that's so sticky. If you don't like your hands being sticky, which I know some people out there are weird about, I do not at all recommend doing this. <laughs> Find a friend, phone a friend, whatever you got to do. Because if you don't like your hands sticky, you are not going to enjoy this at all, ever, period. <laughs> but, oh yeah, here we go. Yeah, we go. Yeah, we got it. I know I said I was going to end the video, but I'm horrible. If there's a camera on and I'm near it, chances are I'm probably going to talk to it because that's what I do. And, you know, I've said this before on other blogs that I've had or other YouTube channels that I've had, and it's probably the biggest reason I keep coming back to it is that I really just, eh, look at that. I enjoy making videos. Man, my hands feel so smooth. Dang. Now you can see those cuts. So the upper one, treated with a sticking salve. Lower one, not treated. I mean, there's not a whole lot of difference in the two of them, but there is some, so that lends me to believe that this stuff probably does work. For right now, 
I'm out. I'm going to figure out how I can uh, do this. All right. I think I found an experimental method here that I am probably going to hate myself for when all is said and done. Because I don't have any cheesecloth, unfortunately. But what I do have is coffee filters and a hand strainer. So we're going to try this, and I'm going to do it on video just, just so y'all can see exactly how much I'm going to hate myself in a little bit. Now, I could probably just use the hand strainer. It does have a pretty fine strain in it. And that may very well be what I end up doing. But I'm not looking forward to that nightmare cleaning this thing off. So, we're going to see how it goes like this. Right now, it's taking far too long for my patience. But, the good news about this is this does filter pretty much everything off of it. And leaves exactly what you want behind. Oh, but this is going to take forever. Okay, my patience is already at its end. We're going to go back to just the screen, I believe, for now. All I'm filtering right now is the water itself. Just kind of filtering any of the you know, chunks out of it. Notice I didn't let the big chunks fall through because those would be stuck in there. Eh, not too horrible. That might actually not be the worst thing in the world. As always, be careful what you pour down your drain. The last thing you want to do is plug your drains with some beeswax and olive oil and whatnot. So, that's what we're left with. Don't touch it. Don't touch it. That's a bad idea. Now, I'm going to recoat my hands with olive oil. I'm going to mix that up a little bit as it is because that's got a really, really nice consistency to it. And we're going to see how things go. Now, the reason I'm coating my hands with olive oil lightly as opposed to anything else because the recipe actually has olive oil in it. So I'm not adding anything foreign to it. I'm not adding vegetable oil to it or anything like that. I'm using something that is already in the recipe. So if I add just a tick more of it, it's probably not going to make a whole lot of difference one way or the other. That is really nice. It's got a really good consistency. Really, really, really good. Awesome. So this is what I'm left with after coating my hands in olive oil. Yes, it's still sticking to me, and it's going to. But, and this is what I have in the Nesmo Diddy bag. That's sticking salve. You can take a little bit of it, rub it on a wound, rub it on a scratch cut, whatever, and, well, it will help it heal, believe it or not. I have definitively proven that myself. The Lord is a sticky. I mean, as the name implies, right? But, Lordy Lou. The cleanup on this is kind of going to be a pain in the neck, I'm sure, because, oh, sticky. But, that's what I've done. That's how I made the sticking salve. Um, you can just take it and boil it in your double boiler and get it to mix up that way and uh, pour it into containers. If you do that, however, you are going to have a hard layer of beeswax on top of your layer of honey and olive oil mix, which... While it may keep it fresh longer, none of these things really ever go bad. So, as you can see here, if you can see the dividing line there, this top layer here was beeswax only, and below that was the actual salve. So what I've done by mixing it the way that I have, I've evened all the ingredients out and gotten a much better consistency out of it. So, yeah, for now, that's what I got. I'm going to end this video here and clean up some of my mess that I've just made because my kitchen was already a disaster piece when I started, and now it's even worse. All right, now that part of this whole process is over, the mixing and whatnot. So I've gone ahead, hey, made a mess out of my kitchen, and just, I learned a lesson this time. I put on my truck gloves, just took and uh, packaged it up. I have these little three ounce tins that I bought off from Amazon, I believe. Make sure to label what you're doing, sticky salve, 
And for smaller ones, for example, this one here is actually going to hammer. This one has a much smaller, more portable version. Much easier to carry in a small bag or a small pouch. Doesn't weigh near as much and still holds a decent amount so you can use it when needed, as needed, and all that. Now, man, you know, I just realized I don't know how good the lighting's going to be on this video. Oh, well, we're filming it. We're already here. Um, like I said, if you're going to make this stuff, be prepared. It's going to make a mess. There's, there's no way around it. Um, however, like I said, it is very useful. It's great stuff. It seems to work really, really well for what it was designed for. There's nothing bad or harmful in this. Like I said, it is olive oil, honey, and beeswax. There's nothing harmful or not even un unnatural, unnatural, unnatural in here. Um, so... I wouldn't eat it. I mean, I'm sure you could. I don't know why you would, but I'm, I'm sure you could eat it if you really wanted to. I would not. Um, but definitely, I def I've, since I made this stuff and I'm trying it out, I have definitely put one of these in my bag. Um, it stays there. That is part of my first aid kit, which I don't carry much of a first aid kit. A little bit. Um, cuts and abrasions wise. Um, this stuff, mostly for that, uh, some band-aids and stuff, I don't carry much of a first aid kit. Uh, I mean, I see people carrying stitches and suture kits and everything else in the world and forceps and all this stuff out there with them. And I don't know. I think, I think it's overkill. Stitching a wound in the wild, I don't believe is a really good idea. If you have to, if we're talking about a, you know, uh, SHTF sit in there, you know, the stuff hits the fan kind of scenario, you know, you may be in a situation where that's what you have to do. Um, I'm not worried about that. This is, but this is for bushcraft. Um, so as far as bushcraft is concerned, cuts are probably going to be your biggest issue. Uh, minor scrapes and splinters for splinters. I mean, the best thing in the world for splinters, honestly, because you know, you got to get them out. You can't leave them in. Carry you a Swiss Army knife, a little Victorinox with a pair of tweezers. That and a good sharp pocket knife should take care of most splinters very easily. Um, you know, cuts and stuff, they're going to happen. You saw the, the post on my Instagram with this one on my hand. That was 12 stitches. Um, I did not stitch that in the woods. We bandaged it up and went to the doctors. Could it have survived just being bandaged? Yes, it, it absolutely could have. Um, it would have been very uncomfortable. It would have taken much longer to heal, I believe, but it could have. So, you know, don't get crazy with your first aid kit. You don't need a trauma kit and everything else. You're not trying to. You're not trying to be an EMT of the wilderness. You're just trying to get yourself put back together so you can get home or get out and get back to civilization and get it taken care of. Um, some of this, some triple antibiotics, something like that, would definitely be a good addition. But other than that gauze and band-aids and some tape man that's really all you need um so uh i have one more video in this series for this part of the proving nesmic thing um i wanted to do the fix and wax which i know there's a million and one recipes and there probably at least as many videos out there about fix and wax i know great beard green beret's got one um i don't know if dave canterbury's got one but I've, I've heard him talk about it a bunch uh and there's others um I have a much simpler recipe than most use just because simple works and I like to keep things simple. Um, so that's probably going to be coming possibly tomorrow, probably next weekend. I'm trying to get on a basis where I do this at least once a week. So if I don't have anything else going on, I will save a video for next weekend. Um, but for now, that's what I got. I'm going to... I'm going to clean. Very non-bushcraft. Damn. All right. That's all I got. We'll see you in the woods.